The dust beginning to settle after that post-election rally. The focus now turning to more traditional events like earnings. That looks the fundamentals. So, what would the big drivers be for the markets going forward? Justin Flaherty, Managing Director and Head of Public Equities at TD Asset Management, joins us now. Uh, let's dig in. Obviously, we saw a big bump. Uh, it's been, it's, the election feels like it was a million years ago. Obviously, it was just last week. <laughs> But as we go through earnings season, we have fundamentals. We have earnings to think about. How should we be thinking about these markets? Yeah. So, you know, uh, thank, first of all, thanks for having me on, Greg. Great to be here. Um, the, the election results have taken the headlines and for good reason, right? There's a lot of implications for the economy and for companies from tariffs and tax cuts and policy changes. Um, and so that's all to come. And, and I think the market has reacted very positively in the early days. But, you know, we need to remember that over any moderate period of time, the true drivers of the market will be earnings. And so we just came through Q3 earnings season, and uh, there's a couple trends, I think, that are worth, worth highlighting. If you think about um, at a very high level, we'll use the S&P 500 as an example, we've had about 90% of companies report earnings. And uh, we're seeing top line growth, of, uh, so revenue growth, of around 5%, a little bit of operating leverage. Uh, plus about a percent of buybacks brings earnings per share growth for um, Q3 on a year-over-year -year basis to about 8%. So decent results. If you think about what's happening across sectors, a lot of the same trends are taking place that we've seen over the last year, right? So technology as a sector, particularly the large, large tech companies are growing earnings in the 20 plus percent range. That's without NVIDIA reporting, who reports next week. That'll move it up probably to closer to 30%. Um, everything else is kind of mid single digits on average growth uh, across the rest of the market. The, the one outlier to the negative is energy. Energy uh, earnings are down negative 20%, and that's on the back of really difficult kind of oil price comps uh, from last year. And so energy companies have seen uh, ne negative earnings growth for, uh, for the year. Um, the last point I'll make just on earnings is some of the signals and commentary we're seeing out of some of the deep cyclicals, which have kind of suffered and, and have been bottoming, we're starting to see some positive signs that that bottom may have been put in, in some of the manufacturing uh, companies and uh, other areas of the industrial complex. Does that, when we take those points all together, justify where these markets are right now? I mean, clearly we saw the move post-election. There was certainty, there was clarity. People start talking about the Trump trade, what it's gonna mm -hmm. mean for di different sectors. But if we look at what the companies are actually giving us and some of the forecasts, can we say yeah. then this seems like a fairly valued market? Yeah, so look, uh, it, the market is most likely going to continue uh, to remain on solid footing as long as the earnings um, remain on solid footing. And so when you think about looking into 2025 earnings expectations, right now they're for about 15% growth for the S&P 500. And the nice thing that you have in 2025 is you have uh, a little stronger contribution outside of technology. So you have healthcare starting to play a bigger role, which is a big part of the market. Um, financials start to play a bigger role. And so you have other sectors starting to contribute. The one uh, thing that could derail some of the confidence is if we do start to see inflation poke its head again, right? We put that proverbial genie back in the bottle and um, with some of the policies that might come in around tariffs, I mean, if we started to see a bit of a surge in inflation, that could start to spook investors a little bit. I wanted to talk about that. I, I was doing, I had a conversation this morning with one of the radio stations we talked to. They go, what's going on with U.S. inflation? Mm -hmm. And for a year, for about two years now, that was the most important thing I could talk about yeah. when I went on yeah, to yeah. talk to them. And now it's just like, well, it came to this, it's still important, but you, you get into the feeling that once January comes, once yep. a new administration is in, uh, things could change there. Is it, are we sort of in that pattern now where it's like, let's wait and see what we get next year? Yeah, we are. And it really is going to depend on how many of the policies that, um, Trump and his team have been talking about are uh, implemented into the market in terms of tariffs. Um, and if we do see uh, a real high level of tariffs being imposed across the board on different countries, um, you could see inflation start to poke its head. Let's talk about what it means for Canada, right? We've seen the rally thing, and uh, I mean, the Amer we're used to it, right? The Americans uh, chew off all the headlines. TSX mm -hmm. actually closed at a record high, and yeah. it's building on it modestly today. What does the Canadian market look like? Yeah, it's, it's been a question we've received from a lot of our clients, which is, you know, what does this mean for Canada? We, we have a decent understanding for the U.S. What does it mean for Canada? And for, for Canada, I think the simple uh, truth is that um, a strong U.S., 
is probably not a bad thing for Canada, right? We're their biggest trading partner. And if you think about what Trump's going to do, Trump is going to run the economy as hot as he can potentially get away with without inflation coming back. And so Canada, as the largest trading partner, will likely benefit from that. Um, the other thing that's happening in Canada is that we're getting aggressive, aggressive rate cuts. And so if we get another 50 basis points in December, which is a possibility, we'll have 175 basis points of rate cuts since the cycle started. And that's obviously very stimulative and, and points to a, a positive direction for 25 and 26 in, in the economy. The one counterpoint to that narrative is that you know, Trump is going to put in place tariffs. And if, if Canada can't remain um, inside that kind of tariff wall, what does that mean? And so, you know, we've talked a lot about this on our team, and we think that there's a reasonable chance that Canadian companies um, and a lot of our, our large parts of our economy do remain inside the tariff wall. And so, the, you know, the net net implications for Canada could still be very positive. As we take a look at the Canadian market, then, because we talked about how the energy companies, a lot of them have struggled, uh, given the fact it's pretty tough comps year over year. And the, we think of the composition, maybe, what, what do we have? When we talk about the TSX composite index hitting a new high, we're talking about either it's financials put us there, uh, energy or materials for the most part, although we, we have a tech name. We do have Shopify. We, we do have yeah. Shopify, who just reported really, really strong results, and uh, they are starting to generate really nice profitability. But you're right, the major driver of the TSX is, is most likely going to be financials. And um, you've seen some earnings growth strength coming out of some of the banks as uh, PCLs have started to look like they're peaking and the economy is on sure footing. And so, you know, there's uh, a little bit of momentum here in the Canadian market that, you know, could last a little while.